Did that 88 days feel like a long time or a short time? Oh, a long time. But I was lucky. I had my family, my husband Jess, my dog, and my two kids. So when they would visit, it would be nice. But I just wanted it to be over with. I wanted to go home. But then when I did go home on a trial basis, I wanted to go back to Madonna's. But then I didn't. I cried both ways. At Madonna's, it just felt so familiar there. You get used to everybody doing things for you. And at home, I was alone sometimes. My husband worked second shift, so the nurse would tuck me in before she would leave. But it wasn't all bad, though. I would get in my wheelchair and go run around, and that was pretty fun. Your progress has been good, but you've also had some setbacks, too. Oh, yes, I've had some setbacks. I'm a weird case, I guess. I'll go back up to Mayo's, and they'll record me, and they'll use me for schooling up there. Hmm. You must have an unusual and important case. I guess so. I've always wanted to be famous. <laughs> <laughs> but not quite in that way. So. What about the antibodies? Oh, that process is such a long process. I have to go in and take this plasmapheresis. It's a process where I go in, they strap me into a chair in the hospital, and I take it every other day for 14 days. And then I just feel drained afterwards. My blood pressure would get so low I couldn't even stand. Which is funny because when they first started doing therapy, my blood pressure would go sky high. You take a lot of pills now? Uh, a slug of them. Which is very ironic because when I, I wouldn't even, not one. Not one, not even a Tylenol. <laughs> when they first started giving them to me, I would have to crush them up and put them in some applesauce or ice cream. But that's old hat now. My husband still gives me my shots. It's not easy because I'm so, it's difficult to find a place. How are you getting along now? Actually, I'm doing quite well. I can get around the house sometimes without the cane, but I still do need help. My wheelchair kept breaking down places like the zoo or when they were pushing me up a hill. So we traded it in and I got a prescription at Madonna's for a, oh, what do they call it? A full-fledged positioning chair. And that has been nothing but problems since day one. It's been real fun having a scooter that just doesn't go. You've certainly had a lot of things to deal with, and you still seem to have a really good attitude. Your courage is admirable, and your story should inspire everybody. One of the nicest things you have is a new scooter. That's the way it should be for somebody who's famous, don't you think? <laughs> now all you need is a driver. <sighs> now she should inspire everybody, and she should be recognized in the Hall of Fame. Her story is one that should inspire us all. All right, Jocelyn. What the hell is that noise? What the hell's wrong with your leg? Not sure. <laughs> it's not helping. Oh, um. Maybe I should come back later. All right, Dr. Allen, he used to practice medicine. Just goes to show that MS can hit even people you don't suspect. I don't want to interrupt your exercising, but I was wondering if I could visit with you for a while? Certainly, you wouldn't be interrupting anything. This is pretty much my life now. Exercising? Yep, I used to be kind of a couch potato when I practiced family medicine, <laughs> but MS changed all that. Now I practice exercising my body. It's essential for people who have MS. I'm such a believer that I've organized a class at the YMCA for people who have it. That's great. Uh, I'm afraid there's nothing great about MS. MS sucks. 
The only thing you can do is fight back. How long have you had MS? Well, I was diagnosed four years ago, but I think it's been following me around much longer than that. So, do you mean you suspected you had it? Oh, no, not at all. Now that I look back, it may have been the foot-dropping thing, but then I had no idea. So, hmm. When did, when did you notice? Well, I took me a while to notice. Um, let's see. Where were you? I was in Saudi Arabia from 94 to 96, and we'd set out on these desert runs. Um, the, what they called the Hash House Harriers were active then. They'd set out on desert runs. I could never run. I could walk. It was kind of unique. We'd have 100 people running around in the middle of the desert in the middle of the day. <laughs> well, they had water stops. <laughs> I'd trip, and sometimes I'd trip. So, when you came back to the United States, did you suspect you had it then? No, not at all. Then I had no idea anything was neurologically wrong. So, when did you begin to think it might be MS? Well, I was actually up at the Mayo Clinic for a separate problem, and I had to ask to go see the neurology people, and I thought I wasn't walking right, and it was getting worse, and I was convinced something was wrong. So, did anyone else in your family say anything? Anything about the way you were walking? One doc said I had a dyslexic way of walking. <laughs> <laughs> I could walk around the island then. I was out on a Pacific island, and it was about a four-mile walk around. I could walk around the island then, but my feet would be dragging. You were pretty physical in your life then. Oh, no, not at all. I enjoyed walking and biking. I played racquetball in the 80s until my ankle started to turn. You know, that may have been the first sign it was starting to affect me. When did you finally understand that you truly had MS, and you had to give up your practice? Oh, it was getting bad by, let's see, the spring of 05. I was up at the prison working, and I realized I couldn't handle myself in combat very well. <laughs> and, well, they don't run the air conditioning out there during the summer, and it gets pretty hot, and I had difficulty with multitasking, and I didn't want to screw up before I quit, so I quit before I screwed up. So you weren't asked to quit? No, I was decided to go. They were willing to keep me, yet I got too tired in the afternoons, and my wife told me I didn't realize it at the time, but she told me I was stumbling around and falling when I got home, and I'd have to stop and rest before I could get out of my parking place. So, do you wish you'd known sooner? Well, in some ways, I'm kind of glad I wasn't diagnosed earlier. Well, I kind of knew. I was up at Mayo, and they said I had a demyelinating disease, and I said, but don't call it anything more than that. Because if you do, I can't go back to Antarctica. And so, they said, well, that's all it is right now, and I got a second contract to Antarctica out of it. So, have you learned anything by having MS? I find that I'm more patient with people who have had problems, and it's given me a perspective I wouldn't have had otherwise. But the fact is, the silver lining is pretty hard to find, but as I said before, MS sucks. Well, I think that says it all. <laughs> All right. I should see if Jocelyn's ready to talk. Ow. What the hell was that? I, th I think you had a seizure or something. Seriously. Hold on. I gotta make a call. Stanley. Your, your daughter's had a seizure. Do you want to watch the kids, or do you want to take her to the hospital? Okay, I'll watch my own kids. What was that? I have no idea, but my head hurts right now. And other than annoying, it's actually kind of funny. If you think about it. Well, you may not remember. <laughs> had some sort of full-blown seizure. I had to watch it. That was right there. And look at your leg now. That's the funny part of all this. Look at your face. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're scared. No. Although, you know how you scratch Molly behind her ear and her leg starts twitching? <laughs> it's kind of how I feel right now. Okay, smart ass. <laughs> what are you 
I, am I interrupting something? No. No. Oh, no. Just scratch and Molly. <laughs> can you walk? I have no idea. I haven't tried yet. I know I can fall. No. Let's try doing the opposite. All right. <sighs> help. Oh. He's no help. It's okay. Um. Maybe it's still not a good time. Right, Mary Beth. Where is Mary Beth? Hmm. Mary Beth? Mary Beth? Okay, good. I didn't want to be alone. May I join you? Are you here visiting family? Oh, no, I'm actually here to visit you. Really? Why? Because I heard you have MS and a great attitude. Ah, uh, yes. I have both in great abundance. Can I ask you how you do it? Do what? Have MS? I don't really have a choice on that. No, I mean have a great attitude when you have MS. Well, I've been rolling. Well, you are right. That I do have a choice on. I suppose that the answer is that I choose to continue to live a good life, and I play cards. May I join you? Do you have a lot of money? Oh. <laughs> Why are we going to be... Why? Are we going to be playing a game that involves betting? No. I am multitasking. I am also collecting money for the MS walk. Oh, I'd be glad to contribute. Well then, fine. Do you play cards? Not very well. Well, good. <laughs> I don't get around so well either, so we both have something to overcome. What Why don't you say we play kings in the corner? Works for me. Will you show me how? Will I answer your questions about my life? Sure. I may not be able to move very well, but I am used to doing more than one thing at once. Since you got MS? No, long before that. I have always given 200% to what I've done. When I was product manager for U.S. West Phone Book, I did my job so well that I earned bonuses. That's great. When did you decide you couldn't do your job anymore? Oh, I, I was diagnosed when I was with MS when I was 27 years old because I was lucky enough to have a doctor who knew what it was. A lot of people don't. I was out jogging as I did every day, and I noticed that one foot was dragging, and so I went to the doctor. And is that what stopped you from working? Oh, no, I, I kept working. It wasn't until I was 37 that I knew the disease was really affecting me. What happened? Well, I called a mandatory staff meeting, and I was the only one who didn't come. <laughs> what happened then? Well, I realize now that my memory was being affected by the disease, and I decided that I should retire. I called another meeting, and this time I went. <laughs> and after we discussed the business of the day in the other meeting, I told them that I would need to retire. They were devastated, of course, because I was such a good worker. And how were you? Well, first, I felt free, because I dedicated so much of my life to work, and then I had to face my losses. I ended up in a wheelchair shortly after retirement, because I couldn't walk. Then how did you ma maintain the great attitude? Have you ever seen the movie, The Secret Garden? Yes. Well, I went to that movie. And if you remember, that boy in the wheelchair just gets up and walks at the end. So that's what I did. I got out of that chair. I walked with a cane. So I was actually walking by myself. I just kept the cane in case I might tip over but I didn't. That film made me feel great. That's amazing. That film truly had an impact on me. So after that, I try to keep my own life flourishing. You see, that is my secret garden. Nice. So how are you doing now? Well, in 2008, I had a bad episode, and I had to go in the hospital for two weeks. Now I have very limited mobility, and I need help with eating, and, and I'm limited to what I can eat. 
like? Like, no more popcorn, and I love popcorn. But I can't have solid food, so it's no more for me. But I can have cheese. So the first time I went to a movie, I had the nacho cheese instead, and I smelled the popcorn. <laughs> oh, and I can have sugar-free chocolate. And you know, chocolate is good for you. It is? Oh, yeah. It helps your body to relax and get some good positive energy flowing. Good to know. Yes, it is. I have learned a lot of different things that can help to enhance your life. I remember in my younger years, we would have these great card games, and we enhanced those with, with a, what's well, a, a natural grass, if you know what I mean. You mean natural gas. Yeah, natural gas. No. No, no, no I mean grass. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, that, was, that was for medical reasons, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> The doctor said that if it helped with the pain, it was fine. <laughs> and it didn't hurt the card games either. <laughs> the interesting thing is as I got older, I didn't have a lot of pain. Do you have pain now? Sometimes, if I don't get my exercises in. The nurses were helping me the other day and, and moved my leg, and I said, that hurt. And they said, what hurt? And I said, my leg. Which reminds me, I need to get going because I have to spend some time at the standing table. That's where I, I stand to strengthen my legs. I, I play solitaire while I stand. You're an amazing woman. You should stand tall and proud. Oh, I would if I could, <laughs> if I could stand. I have long legs. In fact, I've grown a quarter inch since all this began. So your MS experience has helped you grow as a person. Yes, you could say that. <laughs> I have learned to be positive to make the best of every situation. When I retired at 37, I didn't know what was going to happen. Now I'm 53 and living in a nursing home and playing cards. I learned to accept each challenge that life threw at me, and I found alternative ways for finding fulfillment in my life, like eating chocolate <laughs> and playing cards. <laughs> well, you're very good at it. Uh, that's because you got to know when to hold them, honey. <laughs> You want to help push me to my therapy? I'd be glad to. Good. Then we can stop by in my room and you can give me that money you promised for the MS walk. Wow, you are good. Is it true that you're always one of the top money earners? For oh, your yeah. Walk? Yeah. I got first the first year and that, I got, that I got involved about 20 years ago. And this last year, I got seventh. I start nagging my sister for the pledging forms even before they come out. <laughs> so. You're a very remarkable woman. Ah, I just play the cards, the hands I'm dealt with, and I share my secret garden. I think I'd like to know her secret to playing cards. You won't believe how much money she got out of me for the MS walk. She even asked strangers as we were walking down the hall. I'd watch out for her after the show. All right, Brian, Brian, are, are you drinking a beer? Yeah. You must not have MS. I must have the wrong house, sorry. No, I can drink a beer, and I have MS. Of course, it has to be Coors Light. <laughs> Doctor says I can have one or two a day. Do you think that Coors will want to sponsor me now that I'm talking about it publicly? <laughs> I don't know about that, but doesn't it affect your MS and the medicines you're taking? Well, actually, I've been on all kinds of medications, and the first ones I took called Avonex, and that made me sicker than a dog, like I had the flu five days a week. <sighs> but the ones I'm on now seem to work. You know, when I first started feeling better, I thought it was because I switched beers. I used to drink Schlitz. Oh, <laughs> can I say that without getting into trouble? <laughs> I think as long as you're telling me your story, you can say whatever you need to say. <laughs> well, good. Well, as I was saying, they put me on a new combination of medication, and, well, that's when I switched to Coors Light. I thought, if two a day were making me feel better, why not try three or four? <laughs> but 
Actually, it was the medication that was making me feel better. A lot of people with MS can't drink beer because it makes them feel hungover all the time. Well, that's the joy of this disease. It affects everyone differently. My brother was diagnosed with MS before I was, and, well, his neurologist basically told him to go home because there's nothing they could do. Well, see, now they have different medication, like Avonex, which made me sick. <laughs> That's also when I realized what kind of beer I could drink. I'm a bohunk, so we like our beer. <laughs> so you can get around OK now. Well, 20 years ago, um, I was having a hard time getting around, um, even with a cane at times. At one time, I even had to use a cart. But about five years ago, after taking Copaxin with the Provigil, which gives me little red spots every now and then, like those red polka dot swimsuits, but it's really not an issue. But after taking the Copaxin with the Provigil, I, things just seemed to work. I didn't notice, but others did, friends and neighbors. They would tell me, hey, you're doing a bit better. You're not using the cane as much you seem to be getting along better. Well, it was just a day-to-day -day thing, so I didn't notice anything. I just figured, well, maybe I was. What about the spots? Did they like your polka dot swimsuit? <laughs> Actually, I haven't had too many videos or snapshots of it, but, well, <laughs> for the right fee, I would consider it. Of course, my fees are not cheap. I'm not easy and I'm not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> but I do enjoy life. As a bohunk, we enjoy the simpler things in life. When did you notice you were having problems? Hmm. Well, I was never very athletic, although I could compete with the best of them in gymnastics. <laughs> Lousy at basketball. Anyway, I was planting a cherry tree with my son for my dad, and after being outside in the afternoon on my knees, and man, was it hot. Huh. You know, something happened to that tree although I don't think it was cut down by an ex-president. <laughs> but I had a hard time walking when I stood up, and my son noticed right away, and he was only eight years old. But by the time we left the farm, I felt fine, so we didn't think anything of it. But in 1986, my brother was diagnosed, and a few years after that, I noticed I was having some of the same problems that he was. And so I went to my doctor, who sent me to a neurologist, had an MRI, and he said, yeah, that's what you got. So did it affect your work? Huh. Well, I was an engineer, and uh, one of my primary duties was to develop specifications. And I would notice that things weren't quite right when I would go outside, especially in the summer, if it was hot. So I worked for the state, and well, they let me keep working. Of course, <laughs> didn't help that a deputy director married my second cousin, and I was good friends with him. <laughs> <laughs> so I could do the office work and was smart enough to use a cane when I went outside to test the equipment. But eventually, even the technical work became a challenge. So I ret retired and began doing consulting engineering which I got paid more for. I worked less and got paid more. <laughs> I could even set my own schedule. Well, with deadlines, of course. But you know, one really smart thing I did was buy disability insurance, since the state didn't pay for it. So did customers ever wonder about your clumsiness around equipment? <laughs> well, if I did, I would say, why don't we get a few Coors Lights and see if we can't get them some improvement here. <laughs> <laughs> but. Actually, my brother had more uh, physical trouble than I did. <laughs> my father used to tell him that he looks like he's drunk all the time. <laughs> but I was smart enough to use the cane. So what now? You know, I really think Coors should be reimbursing me for this. <laughs> Do you think so? What can I say? It's when I get hot that I have physical trouble, and it's the heat that put me where I am today. So I really think Coors, could, Coors should consider, because when you're hot, you're hot. I guess that does deserve a drink. Now, there's a bohunk with a great attitude. 